Hi guys, welcome to Nest. I am Shaktodip Niyatur, your food technology mentor here. In this YouTube series, we are going to discuss various previous year questions from food technology in XCXL branch. Okay, and we will cover various numericals also, as well as some theoretical questions also of previous year get questions. Majorly focusing on food technology portion. So, our first question is, which of the following contains the phytonutrient allicin? Please remember that allicin is a sulfur compound. Okay. So, options are option A, grape, option B, cauliflower, option C, garlic, and option D, chili. Phytonutrient. Okay. So, here the correct option is C garlic okay because we know that garlic consists of some sulfur compounds that is allicin allyl propyl isosulfide diallyl disulfide which can be break down by enzyme allylase so here the correct option is garlic for grape the compound is methyl and theanilate. For cauliflower, it is dimethyl sulfoxide. For garlic, it is allicin. And for chili, it is capsaicin. Okay. So here, the correct option is option C, garlic, which contains phytonutrient allicin. Okay. The next question is, which mold okay is responsible for the characteristic blue marbling in blue veined cheese okay blue marbling please remember ki if it is blue marbling means it is always rocoforte you can remember, you know, BMR, but here, please remember blue marbling rock fort. Okay. VMR, just remember blue marbling rock fort. Okay. This mnemonics you can remember. We know BMR is vessel metabolic rate. So, with respect to this mnemonics, you can remember that. BMR is blue marbling rock fort. So, what's the correct option? The correct option is option B, penicillium rock fort. Okay. Rhizopasaurizin, no. Aspergillus niger, majorly for citric acid, and penicillium camembert is for the camembert cheese, which is basically a surface mold ripened cheese. For the blue marbling or blue vein cheese, the correct answer is option B, Penicillium Rockforti. Okay. Now, the question three, which genus of bacteria does not, okay, have cell wall? Please remember that bacterial cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan okay which is basically a polymer of n acetyl muramic acid and n acetyl glucosamine okay now option a lactobacillus option b staphylococcus option c mycoplasma option d escherichia out of the following which bacteria does not have any cell wall okay here, the correct option is option C, Mycoplasma galsepticum. Okay. Because for its parasitic activity, cell wall is not needed. Okay. And one more thing, please remember 
for Ascherichia, E. coli, okay, the perfect strain is O157, it is O. O157 is to 87 according to the flagellary movement. It is basically a fecal indicator microorganism. Okay. Which can cause travelers diarrhea. Okay. So the specific strain of E. coli O157 is to 87, which is basically a index organism for fecal contamination, which can cause the travelers diarrhea. Okay. So in this question three, the uh, bacteria that is Mycoplasma galsepticum does not have any cell wall due to its parasitic activity. Okay. So here the correct option is option C. Now, the question number four is which of the following pigment, okay, pigment does not have any pro vitamin A activity, okay? So please remember if it is pro vitamin A, it means it is somewhat related to carotene, okay? And what all are the types or different names of carotene? It is like alpha carotene, beta carotene, beta cryptoxanthin, lutein, and zeaxanthin. Okay. So these all are the pigments which is majorly responsible for pro-vitamin activity because they all act as a precursor for vitamin A. It's a type of carotenoids which is majorly responsible for the formation of vitamin A. Okay? That is retinal. Okay? So, here, which pigment does not have any pro-vitamin activity? So, our correct option is option C, lycopene. Because apart from C, all other options involved in pro-vitamin A activity. Okay, what is lycopene? Lycopene is the red colored pigment, red to orange colored pigment, majorly responsible for the color of tomato. Very important guys, remember, the red or orange colored tomato is majorly responsible for lycopene. So here the correct option is option C. So the next question is, question number five is, identify the analysis that must be performed first, okay, to judge the cleanliness of spice or herb powders. Option A is acid insoluble ash content. Option B is pesticide residue level. Option C is volatile oil content. Option D is mycotoxin level. From the options, it is very clear if it is some powder, so with respect to powder, which property is majorly proportion or responsible? It is acid insoluble ash. It is the correct option, option A, because acid insoluble ash means the amount of material, majorly ash, that is insoluble in acid, like HCl or H2SO4, which is present in sample. So this test has to be performed first to judge that how much a spice or herb powder is clean. Okay, pesticide residue level no, volatile oil content no, mycotoxin level no. But you can remember one full form regarding this pesticide residue level. Before the production of any food during farming, we are using pesticide. So MRL that is maximum residual limit. It is the maximum that it can be. If it is beyond the limit, then it then we can't consume and it is harm. Maximum residual limits. And mycotoxin is basically a toxin produced by some organism. Please remember 
mycotoxin is produced by aspergillus flavus and aspergillus parasitus. Okay. So here the correct option is option A. The acid insoluble as content, we need to perform first to judge the cleanliness of spice or half powders. Okay. So I hope guys you this video is like helpful. If you guys found this video helpful and informative, do like, share, subscribe our channel, Enes. Bye bye. Thank you.